For quite a while, people have envisioned what life might be like in other universes. On account of the James Webb Space Telescope, the most remarkable telescope in presence, that question can at long last be investigated. While noticing the nearest star system to us, Proxima Centauri, which is just four light years away, researchers have seen a few exceptional oddities from one of the planets in the system Proxima b. These peculiarities, called fake lights, have perplexed the best minds in established science. However, what are they? Do these lights propose the presence of intelligent life on the planet? Join us as we investigate the James Webb's alarming discovery of city lights that could change everything. The only life that we are currently aware of is on Earth. Starting from the beginning of human civilization, people have questioned whether there is life somewhere else in the universe. To complete such an interstellar hunt, American cosmologists Jill Tarter and Thomas Pearson launched the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, SETI, project in 1984. The charitable's goal is to assemble space-borne radio transmissions. Radio waves can travel farther and are, therefore, more prone to be identified by the 42 radio telescopes that make up the exceptional Allen Telescope Array in the Californian Overflow Mountains. However, in the past 30 years, no obvious alien signal has been found. Following that, the James Webb Space Telescope's successful launch boosted the journey to look at a scope of unseen planets circling far-off stars. As the largest telescope in the world, drifting approximately 1 million miles from Earth and equipped with incredibly sensitive indicators, it has the potential to uncover huge discoveries. Twenty years ago, there were no known planets outside our planetary system. However, from that point forward, more than 4,000 exoplanets have been found circling different stars. As indicated by NASA, the universe may contain trillions of exoplanets. The earliest indications of something going on under the surface, past our solar system, might be seen as in extraterrestrial vegetation. The Galileo spacecraft, on its course to Jupiter, turned its gear back toward Earth and saw a clear sign of the presence of plants, recognizing the vegetation red edge, VRE, biosignature, a blend of red and infrared lights reflected by plants. For example, a planet like Earth covered in a wilderness ought to have a strong VRE signal easily identifiable. The JWST will measure the VRE of far away, Earth-like planets in the habitable zone around stars, which could give significant indications of something going on under the surface in the exoplanet environment. When sunlight crosses a planet's star, the JWST might have the option to identify it as it enters its atmosphere. The missing frequencies would then be found through spectroscopy, as molecules and atoms in the air absorb specific frequencies, making a characteristic fingerprint that the JWST can recognize. This technique might be used to determine the composition of the atmosphere and whether life is possible. Life could exist on Earth-sized planets with climates similar to our own, characterized by a combination of oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide. By searching for elements that aren't generally present, one might be able to identify intelligent life. For instance, chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, produced for use in refrigeration and cleaning products would almost certainly be recognizable to outsiders checking Earth's atmosphere from afar. If the JWST found CFCs in planetary atmospheres, that would be an obvious sign of progress. However, life on exoplanets probably won't look like life on Earth by any means. Sometimes, even natural living things like extremophiles, species that can survive in conditions where other living things would die, can seem alien. This group of life forms, primarily microorganisms, can endure extreme circumstances, such as heat up to 250 degrees Fahrenheit or solid acid with pH levels under 3. Since planets like Earth are bound to support life than those with extreme temperatures or acidic conditions, it may be wise to start with those first. Prime candidates could have temperatures that permit liquid water to exist on their surfaces and orbit a stable star. Our Sun is a yellow G-type star. These stars are more uncommon and usually have shorter lifespans. However, in our universe, the probability of finding planets orbiting red dwarf stars, more frequent, cooler, and dimmer than our sun, is higher. This long time span allows for the development of life and evolution to produce complex organisms. About 40 light years from Earth, the TRAPPIST-1 planetary system will be the subject of the JWST's first mission. 
It rotates around a quiet red dwarf star with seven Earth-sized rocky planets. Three of these rocky planets, situated in the so-called habitable zone, could have liquid water on their surfaces. Notwithstanding its smaller and colder mass compared to our sun, the Trappist-1 star emits light that is similar to that of Earth. Because of the close orbit of its planets, the most obvious opportunity to observe city lights outside the nearby planetary system is Proxima Centauri, a red dwarf star that is 4.25 light-years from the Sun. Proxima is multiple times fainter than the Sun, so a planet would need to be multiple times closer to it than Earth is to the Sun in order to support life based on liquid water. In August 2016, astronomers discovered a planet with 1.3 Earth masses in this habitable region a Goldilocks-like zone where the light power is perfect for melting water. Proxima b orbits Proxima Centauri, but the fact that Proxima b is tidally locked makes it a potentially airless, dead planet, given that it orbits its red dwarf star just 4.6 million miles away. This close orbit exposes it to strong solar winds that can completely strip away its atmosphere. However, Proxima b does get sufficient daylight for temperatures and liquid water like those on Earth, due to its proximity to the star. Proxima b is believed to be tidally locked, meaning it always shows the same side to the star, similar to how the moon does in relation to Earth. Proxima Centauri is around 18% the mass of the sun and emits much less light than one might expect for a planet so close to its star, only about 5% of the sun's intensity. It might seem like a scorching ash, but liquid water could exist on Proxima b as long as the planet has an atmosphere to retain heat. Since the total energy reaching it from the Sun is just 65% of what Earth gets, the planet is not particularly friendly to life. It is likely tidally locked, meaning it always faces the same direction toward the star, creating a permanent day and night side with significant temperature changes. The planet also receives 100 times as much high-energy radiation as Earth does, including X-rays and ultraviolet light, because of its proximity to Proxima Centauri. Proxima b is also bombarded with high-energy particles during star flares. Unless it has a protective magnetic field like Earth's, conditions for life may not be positive. Despite these harsh conditions, Proxima b could still be a more pleasant world. Unfortunately, models suggest that the atmosphere of tidally locked planets might be prone to rapid collapse due to the freezing out of volatile gases on the night side. Our planet's atmosphere can be replenished by volcanic activity, and for planets with strong magnetic fields, this atmosphere is less likely to escape. Since we know nothing about Proxima b's volcanic activity or magnetic field strength, we cannot even guess whether the planet has an atmosphere. However, since an atmosphere suggests the presence of oceans, and the two together suggest the possibility of life, we are eager to know if Proxima b has a modern civilization. It could have solar panels covering the day side to produce power to light and warm the evening side which would otherwise be too cold and dark for comfortable habitation. The discovery of Proxima b has triggered a race to determine whether it crosses its star's face, as seen from Earth. These transits would allow researchers to determine the planet's size and mass, which would enable them to estimate its density and confirm its rocky composition, providing information on the materials used to form those rocks. During a transit, starlight could disclose the nature of the planet by passing through its atmosphere. However, the probability that the orbit will be aligned correctly for researchers to see a transit is only 1.5%. The star's tendency to flare also complicates matters. Cosmologist David Kipping of Columbia University says the star is unstable, as stellar heat causes a rocky planet to absorb sunlight and re-emit it as infrared light. However, rocky planets produce a distinct kind of infrared radiation from stars like Proxima Centauri. Moreover, the James Webb Space Telescope was designed specifically to study infrared light. Proxima b's infrared signature is key to identifying the planet's atmosphere. Additionally, the infrared portion of the spectrum has strong advantages over the Hubble Space Telescope, which might allow the JWST to detect city lights on Proxima's night side, even if they are as weak as those currently used on Earth. The JWST could identify artificial lighting as long as it is confined to a frequency band much smaller than the star's light. Proxima b's day side might be heavily covered with solar panels reflecting starlight, as Proxima b orbits its star continuously. The day and night sides are indistinguishable, with cool night lows following daytime highs. 
The temperature difference between day and night depends on whether the planet is made entirely of bare rock, or whether air and water both circulate heat. If there is no atmosphere, Proxima B's day side and night side temperatures will contrast more, since the day side will radiate all the energy it gets from Proxima Centauri as a black body. The night side would look like a frozen wasteland. If the temperature difference between day and night is less pronounced, we can infer the future of space exploration and the search for life beyond Earth holds immense promise, and the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, stands at the forefront of this groundbreaking endeavor. As the most powerful tool ever created for observing distant galaxies, stars, and planets, JWST allows scientists to peer into the very building blocks of the universe. Its advanced technology makes it possible to observe distant exoplanets and analyze their atmospheres with unprecedented detail. This opens new doors for understanding the conditions necessary for life and the potential for intelligent civilizations elsewhere in the cosmos. The JWST's ability to detect biosignatures, gases or chemical patterns that could indicate the presence of life, has created a new era of scientific inquiry. By studying the light that passes through or is reflected off the atmosphere of distant planets, astronomers can determine the composition of the air, identifying gases like oxygen, methane, carbon dioxide, and water vapor. These elements are not only crucial for life as we know it on Earth, but also suggest the potential for biological processes elsewhere in the universe. The search for these compounds, particularly in planets located in the habitable zones of their stars, where conditions may allow liquid water to exist, is one of the most promising avenues for discovering extraterrestrial life. However, as exciting as these possibilities are, the search for life beyond Earth is fraught with challenges. The detection of potential biosignatures doesn't necessarily guarantee the existence of life, as many of the same chemicals can be produced through non-biological processes. For instance, methane can be produced by geological activity as well as biological processes, while oxygen might result from photochemical reactions in the atmosphere. In addition, other factors such as the planet's magnetic field, geological activity, and stellar radiation all play a crucial role in determining whether a planet is capable of supporting life. The complexity of these factors means that while the detection of biosignatures is an important step, it is far from conclusive evidence of life. One of the key hurdles in studying exoplanets is the challenge of isolating their signals from the overwhelming brightness of their parent stars. Even with advanced telescopes like JWST, the light from a distant star can easily drown out the faint glow reflected from its planets. New techniques, such as using coronagraphs or star shades to block out the starlight, are being developed to help astronomers study the planets themselves without interference from their stars. These technologies will be essential for future telescopes, including the planned Louvoir Large UV-Optical-IR Surveyor and HABEX, Habitable Exoplanet Observatory Missions, which will carry out detailed surveys of exoplanets for signs of life. In addition to studying atmospheres, the JWST will help identify exoplanets with potential for life by analyzing their physical characteristics. By studying a planet's size, mass, and orbit, scientists can determine whether it is within the habitable zone where liquid water could exist. Some planets in this zone might be too cold or too hot to support life, but others could have the right conditions for life to flourish. Proxima b, for instance, lies in the habitable zone of Proxima Centauri, but its proximity to the star and harsh environmental conditions make it a challenging candidate for life. Nonetheless, Studying such planets helps refine our understanding of what makes a planet truly habitable. Another important consideration is the age and stability of a star. While red dwarfs like Proxima Centauri are more common than stars like our Sun, they can be highly variable, emitting dangerous radiation that could strip away the atmosphere of any nearby planets. In contrast, a stable star with a longer lifespan, like our Sun, would provide a more conducive environment for life to develop and evolve. Understanding the longevity of a star's habitable phase is crucial when assessing a planet's potential to support life over time.